In this episode of Open Up Microsoft, I have David with me to talk about the open source project at Evenir, a database engine. Stay tuned for more. Hey, David, super happy to have you. So I want to learn more about your project. In fact, I want to make something clear right before we start. So both of us were Microsoft employee, but this project we'll be talking about, this is a personal project, right? It is. It's a completely open source pet project of mine that I started just for fun. Um, yeah. So I basically took a while ago, I took a personal interest in uh, um, event sourcing, you know, the, the architectural pattern. I started studying it just to understand it better. I started using some of the libraries that are open source, some of the commercial databases, et cetera. But I, at some point in time, I just decided, you know what, it would be fun to write my own database, you know, just to understand what it actually means to be on the other side. And yeah, yeah. I spent more time probably at the beginning, just trying to figure out a proper name for the project. And then I kept even here, which comes from a venue, it's Latin to happen. It just popped out. And yeah, so it's, it, it is a fun project that I'm working on right now. It's basically, the, the, the idea is very simple. You have streams, okay? Streams can represent everything. It can represent uh, IoT sensors. They can represent data of customers, orders, anything, you know? Uh, so you can append events. So this is very important. Every year is an append-only data structure. You don't delete streams. You don't delete events because events have, have happened in the past. And unfortunately, we can't change the past. So what you do, every stream has an ID and it has a time. So again, as I said before, customers, we have sensors, whatever it be. Typical use cases can be event sourcing, and as I said, you know, storing sensor data from, from uh, IoT context. Um, so when, you, when you're attending an event, uh, you get an ID back for, for the event. And I took uh, inspiration from Redis, uh, Redis, mm -hmm. and, um, Redis streams. Uh, I used them a little bit, and they're, they're fantastic. I took inspiration a lot from them. And every every event, every ID for an event is basically composed by two parts. There is a timestamp, and then there is a, a sequence number. The sequence number it's basically used for disambiguation in the rare cases where you might have some collisions on on, on timestamp. And the other interesting thing is that you can query it given the given the stream ID. Um, you can query the events from any point in time. You can go from the very beginning of the stream going forward in the future or at your current moment, or you can start from now and querying the event backwards in the past. It depends on, on whatever whatever is your domain, whatever is your use cases. And um, another interesting thing is that uh, events are stored in memory first. So uh, every year acts as a, as, a, as a big cache of streams. And I'm using a least recently used approach Basically, it means that the uh, event, the strings are too old, they just get dropped from the cache. But we are not losing them because there is a background thread um, that basically persists them on the, on, on the file system. I'm using the .NET channels library, which is amazing. And every time uh, the server receives, through the API that is supposed, uh, receives some group of events they're going mm -hmm. to cache first then they go into a channel and the channel then streams them over to the classes that are um taking care of driving on the on the file system and yeah that's that's mostly it if you want to go into with the theoretical world a little bit uh appending an event is a time complexity of one which basically means that it is constant time uh, because we are always, we're not traversing, we're not doing any loops, we're not doing anything crazy, we just append at the end of the stream. And traversing the stream is, of course, uh, happening in linear time, so it's a big goal rotation and where n is the length of the stream. And that's, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it, because there's their import, like, it's important to specify, because there is different type of database, so like, now we know that. Like, like so it's in c sharp uh, like .NET at least because you mentioned using .NET library that's cool it's on github right so like available it is it's it's completely open it's there available for everybody to 
take a look, study, use, send PRs requests. What I'm actually interested into is getting uh, some feedback from the people, PRs, just uh, or understanding if maybe I made I made I made mistakes in my design. I made mistakes in my my coding. One of the uh, goals that I also had was to improve uh, my knowledge into uh, high performance, you know, uh, code writing high performance code. And um, yeah, this is this this project is helping me a lot, especially when it comes to handling uh, file system access and uh, both direction reading reading. Talking about code and, and see it, do, do you have a demo for us? Can you can you show us something? Okay. So the the structure of the project right now and on uh, on GitHub is very simple. I have a, I have a server uh, that is running on the on the background right now, and I have an admin an admin UI that I'm going to show you right now. So through this admin UI, which is by the way written in in, uh, in Blazor, I can start adding a stream. I can type a string type, I have my custom string. I can add like an event type, which right now is string created. Let me make this thing a little bit bigger. So once we have defined the type of a stream and the type of event, if we want to write, we can just start defining a payload. So I can write OK right now and just hit send. At this point, I have this detailed page of the stream. I can see all of the events that have been added so far, and I can check the payload, and I can see what was the very first event that's been sent. But of course, this is not very interesting as it is right now. I can add another event, my event right now, and start adding some JSON data, for example. And this is where probably uh, there will be more use cases because just adding um, just adding basic text is not very fancy or interesting, but when you start adding JSON data instead, when you query it back, you can do all sort of like manipulation on your client's application. Yeah, like a serialized object or something like that. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to uh, storing on the file system, I'm using basically two files per stream. I have a header file that contains basic information about uh, the ID of the events, how many events have been written so far, um, some checks on data, and then I have like a big massive, well, not so massive. In this case, it's quite small uh, have, because we have just two events. I have one data file that, and the headers files has pointers to the actual locations so of each event into that file. So this is how I am basically persisting every stream. Now, this was, again, this was a very simple uh, example of the probably most common, <clears throat> sorry, use cases would be a thing like customers, for example, and I don't know, event type, customer created. And here I can have something like, uh, name is date. And there we go, again, at this point, if, in case we are doing like event sourcing, I can start adding my own customers and then pulling them back from, from the database and uh, rehydrating the state of line aggregates. Um, the other use case uh, is um, IoT. So I have a sample here that I'm going to run real quick. And while it starts, I will walk you through uh, just the code that is necessary. So in the app settings, in the app settings, all we need is basically specifying the uh, server URI, um, which can be like localhost in this case, because I'm running on localhost, the HTTP port or gRPC port, because I exposed uh, uh, from the Avenir server, you can have both HTTP or gRPC running. I would say okay. Yeah. Um, so once you have that configuration in your in your uh, app setting well, JSON file, all you have to do there is a there is a client library that is available in Nubia as well. So you just add uh, this call add that near to be when you're registering your services with the client config that is exposed by the client library as well, and you're basically done. Then you can start pulling events from the database, or you can start producing events, just basically just appending events to the client, to the client library. Right now, uh, the this temperature sensors sample is running, 
So I can go to the UI here, and we have a bunch of strings. String, 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 these are all strings. If we go in query, we see the, 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 the fake producer that I, that I created basically is appending events every, uh, every 10 seconds or so. So we have eight events. Let me refresh. It's nine, and they will keep growing. Oh, that's great. So performance, I'm assuming then performance is a big issue. If you're if you're playing with sensor and IoT, Internet of Things, usually those things send a lot of messages. Though like they are short, but a lot of messages. Yes. So the payload in this case is very small because again, this samples and just storing the temperature and the, the timestamp. Although uh, I could have skipped the timestamp because each event has its own timestamp on it. But it, again, this is just acceptable. But yes, your is a good point. Performance is a concern. And uh, one of the things that's on my to-do list uh, is actual benchmarking. So I'm working right now into uh, containerization, so creating an actual logic container and having the server running, writing benchmarks, as many benchmarks as I can, and then improving the cockpits as much as, as, much as possible. And I see the time is flying right now for the time we have for this episode, but that's how people can help you, like bring ideas like about how, like scenarios, how they would like to use it and maybe provide some feedback so you, you have some kind of direction, how to improve your project and maybe collaborate. Are you open to uh, contributions? Absolutely. This is exactly what I mean. The first thing that I wanted to, to do is make this thing more visible. I, I want people to know that it actually exists because I need help. I want people to help. I want people to uh, enjoy the, the few good things that I added in here and add more good things to it. So uh, any contribution is welcome. Critics, suggestions, anything. New features. There's a, there's a roadmap uh, to do this that I'm working on right now, but there's a lot of things to do. But again, the most important thing is having fun and learning stuff. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for letting us know about this project we'll make sure to put all the link all the information in the description for people to get a get a try of your project thank you for coming.